Hi, sixth grade. Today we are moving on with our mineral identification notes, and we've studied three properties so far that help us to identify minerals. Should be thinking back to what those three are color, luster, and streak, and you've completed your lab over those. And we found that, well, color, luster, and streak, it's a good starting point for when we're trying to identify minerals. Sometimes uh, a lot of minerals have the same color, luster, and streak. So we're going to finally find that hardness is where there's going to be kind of our breaking point for us, where we can really start to tell the differences between some of the minerals. And I would say that a perfect example of this is in our presentation that we've been um, dealing with with color, luster, and streak. I talked a lot about calcite and quartz because they can't, they kept coming up uh, in our discussion. They had the same color. They can both be white or have that clear look to them. Their uh, lusters were the same. They both have a vitreous luster and their streaks are the same. And so what you're going to actually find out is that the hardness of calcite and quartz are different. And that's what's really going to help us to identify those two. So hardness is a very important mineral property, but it can also be somewhat difficult sometimes to run the test. So we're going to get a lot of practice with that in our lab. The I can statements that I really want you focusing on in this video, uh, obviously we're going to continue test, um, tests in order to identify minerals, continue conducting those. So that's 8.3. And then also 8.5, conducting a most hardness test in order to identify the hardness of the mineral. That's going to be the big one here. So let's talk about what a Mohs hardness test even is. When you want to identify a mineral, one of the most useful clues to use is the mineral's hardness. In 1812, Austrian Frederick Friedrich Mohs, a mineral expert, invented a scale to help identify minerals by how hard they are. The Mohs hardness scale is used to rank the hardness of minerals. The scale assigns a mineral's hardness a ranking from 1 to 10 as shown in figure 6. So let's just kind of, before we look at figure 6, let's stop and just get down some notes about hardness. So I've come down here, I have hardness, and so uh, I don't think we really need to describe what hardness is. I think we all know it's how hard uh, a mineral is, but we can, it's how hard a mineral is. We'll be a little bit more specific, uh, but we uh, have the hardness scale, so the Mohs hardness scale. So that is used to rank the hardness of minerals. And we rank those minerals on a scale of 1 to 10. It's important to remember that 1 is going to be the softest and 10 is the hardest. So let's go ahead and let's take a look then at the minerals on the hardness scale. Now, what Mose did was he chose some of the most common minerals that were at this hardness level uh, and used that for his scales because that way a lot of people would have easy access to these minerals. You are going to have, we see here like one talc is the softest. That doesn't mean that talc is the only mineral with a hardness of one. There's going to be plenty of other minerals that have a hardness of one. Talc is just a very common mineral that pops up. So the softest mineral, talc, it flakes when scratched by a fingernail. So a fingernail is actually one of the tools that we can use. You can either use tools or you can also use um, other minerals of, with that you know their hardness of. You'll see that some of these names are missing here, and I'm actually going to have you do that, um, figure out those missing minerals at the end of this video. But we see here that 1 is going to be the softest, 10 is going to be the hardest. We have calcite, so we now know that the hardness of calcite is a 3, so a fingernail cannot scratch it, but a copper penny can. Fluorite, which is another mineral that you might have worked with by now and you've definitely heard of, is a 4. So a little bit harder than calcite. And then six, which is feldspar. That's a very common mineral, and you've worked with that before. This can be scratched by a steel knife, but can scratch window glass. And then corundum, which you probably haven't heard yet, um, it can scratch topaz. So we're going to take a look at this uh, and figure out these mystery minerals here in a second. But let's finish our reading. So hardness can be determined by a scratch test. 
A mineral can scratch any mineral softer than itself, but can be scratched by any mineral that is harder. So if we look, calcite is harder than talc, so calcite is going to be able to scratch talc. Talc won't be able to scratch calcite because it's softer. Another example would be suppose you found a deposit of azurite. Azurite is not on the most hardness scale, but you want to determine its hardness. So you're going to take a small sample and try to scratch it with talc, gypsum, and calcite. So talc, number two is going to be gypsum, and three is calcite. Those three minerals won't scratch it, so that tells us that it has to be harder than at least a three. Now, none of those minerals scratched your sample, but appetite was rated a five on the scale, and appetite does scratch it. So, if appetite, which is number five, that does scratch it, that's gonna be, mean that we're probably at a four or around a four because three was too soft and five was too hard. So that would put us at a four. Now notice that fluor fluorite is at a four. Now we also know that appetite can have a hardness of four as well. So let's just add how we actually use the hardness. So we do a scratch test. To determine hardness. If a mineral gets scratched, it is lower on the scale than that tool or mineral. If it doesn't get scratched, I can't type today. It's higher. And really the, the best way to do this is kind of just start to work through the lab. The lab is going to be challenging, but um, the lab's going to give you the best practice at working with this. And so if we actually look at um, all of the minerals that fit in here, one, talc is the softest. The hardest is actually going to be diamond. So those are really kind of um, a few. You don't have to memorize the whole most hardness scale, but it is important to kind of know some of the main ones. So one is talc, seven, which is kind of like the hardest of the most common minerals that we usually work with is quartz. And then the hardest one is diamond, but really we don't deal with a lot of um, minerals that are much harder than quartz. Majority of the minerals that we come across in our everyday life, they're gonna have a hardness that's less than seven. So this kind of um, ends the section on our notes that you'll need, but I do want to kind of show you uh, what you're going to be working with in your hardness lab. And with that hardness lab, you are going to have a hardness kit. It looks like a box like this. Some of the boxes are green depending on um, which kit you get. So once you get your kit open, you'll see that it kind of looks like this in here. I'm going to try to show you without dumping it. And then on the other side, it gives you some information about Mohs hardness, and then it also gives you the scale with the minerals on it. So the mineral that you have, you'll notice in my kit that my minerals are actually numbered. Uh, your minerals will not be numbered because you're trying to put them in the correct order. Um, the tools that they give you are a nail. This is a porcelain plate. It's kind of like what we used, um, oh, it's exactly like what we used with our streak. And then instead of a copper penny, they give you a fresh little strip of copper. And you also have a piece of glass. So when you're working with this, uh, in the mineral hardness information, it tells you what those tools have a hardness of. And what you're going to want to do is you can take one of the minerals that you want to work with. So if I were to take this mineral here, I'm going to start with the, the softest tool, which would be my fingernail. And I'm going to see if my fingernail would actually scratch it. If it does scratch it, then I'm going to stop right there. And I know that this is going to have a hardness either 2.5 or less. So it's either going to be a 1 or a 2. Uh, if my fingernail doesn't scratch it, then I'm going to move on to the next hardest substance. And I'm going to take the copper. And I'm going to see if my mineral will scratch my copper. Now, if it scratches the copper, this tells me that it's harder than copper, and copper has a hardness of three, 
So I know that this will be higher than a three. Then I'm gonna take my mineral and I'm going to see if it will scratch the nail. The nail has a hardness of five to 5.5. So if it doesn't scratch the nail, I can actually kind of take my nail and see if my nail will scratch it. You can go back and forth. So you just have to always remember which one, what your hardness is at. So if my nail would actually scratch it, then that would mean that it has to be lower than a 5.0 or a 5.5. And so if it, let's say it scratches the copper penny or the copper plate, this one does, but then it doesn't scratch the nail and the nail's able to scratch it, that would tell me that the hardness is probably a four because the copper penny, it was stronger than that and that was a three. The steel nail is a five to a 5.5, so I'm right in between there. So this is where it does just take a lot of logic and a lot of practice. I'll be around if you need help as you're going through. I can kind of guide you through it, but that hardness lab definitely, um, it, takes, it takes some practice. So if you look at your hardness lab here, you'll see that you'll need your mineral samples, and then the penny, steel nail, ceramic, streak plate, those are all in there. And then you're actually gonna only be working with six mineral samples. You're not gonna be working with all seven. Um, and just to kind of make it a little bit easier for you. And as soon as you um, kind of go through your procedure, you'll see that it kind of leads you through it step by step so that you um, aren't completely on your own trying to figure out the hardness. On here, I've put the comparison tools that we have and what their hardnesses are for you. So you'll notice there aren't comparison tools for some of the numbers and that's okay. You're not gonna fill in anything in this table. Where you're gonna be recording the mineral name and the hardness is over here. Okay, so if you have any questions before you get started, make sure you let me know. But other than that, you guys are good to go to get started on your hardness lab.